Nice. I'm... Hello, everybody. I would like to greet everyone who would possibly be watching this video later. Today, we are discussing the empowerment of leaders with learning disabilities, or how I'd rather put it, harnessing the abilities. My name is Erika. I am an MBA student at the THM University in Friedberg, Germany. And today, I have a pleasure uh, chatting with Mr. Vic Williams, an author, business consultant, founder of the Adasha's company and renowned expert in empowering neurodivergent entrepreneurs, specifically with dyslexia and ADHD. A man on a, a quest of uplifting minds. Welcome, Mr. Williams. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it, Erica. It's great to be here. Okay, nice. So as I mentioned in our previous chat, I'm neurodivergent myself. So it's really yeah. an honor of hosting this interview and I'm thrilled to have you here. Excellent. Um, well, <laughs> nice. Well, as I say, some of the greatest minds throughout history had quirks or challenges that made them quite unique, right? And yeah. I know you have a vast background coming from South Africa and moving to a different country. So to kick things off, can you just tell us a bit more about yourself? I'm sure you sure. met a large number of neurodivergent people. And at what point did yeah. you realize, hey, we all have it in us, the potential? <laughs> So um, uh, when I when I grew up, I always knew that there was something different about me, something different about the way I thought, the the way I did things, the way I acted, all that sort of stuff. I always knew there was something different, and I knew that um, I wasn't like kind of mad or insane or you know something like that. I, I just knew that my brain worked differently. Um, but back in in the day when I was growing up um, in the 1960s and 1970s, um, there was no such thing as neurodivergence, um, especially in South Africa. Nobody spoke about it. Nobody understood it. There was no connection with it. And um, probably um, when I left school, I left school when I was 16, which is two years uh, earlier than you would normally leave school in South Africa at that time. Um, I left school and I went straight to the military uh, okay. and I found a home in the military where um, I found a process. I found a system that worked for me and it, it helped me to, um, to understand and conceptualize things better. But still nobody told me about this thing called uh, dyslexia or ADHD. In fact, at the time, um, uh, in, in, in most people in South Africa spoke about dyslexia as um, almost like a disease. Uh, you know, if you had that, you were sick. Yes. You know, so, so um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I mean, that was the times. You know, people didn't understand. Yeah, sure, there was no sure. um, kind of uh, uh, advanced understanding of it. Okay, There wasn't the fMRI Absolutely. scanning and all that sort of stuff we got today. Um, and then yeah. as, as things progressed, um, I left the military eventually. Uh, I got a, a med medical discharge, left the military, and went out into the big wide world and, and um, oh. always found that I couldn't f fit into a job. Um, I struggled to work for a boss. I struggled to work for these systems that just weren't designed for me, you know? Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and most people that, that are dyslexic or ADHD mm -hmm. or a neurodivergent will be able to understand and relate to that because that's how we are. We, the, the, right. the world um, or sort of the business world, the job world, the... Um, now, all that sort of stuff is not mm -hmm. it's not designed to work with our brains in exactly. um, <laughs> in collaboration or in context. Okay, so uh, that went through um, the nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties. Started different businesses, made things grow, failed a few times. In fact, failed a lot of times. Grew a lot of big mm -hmm. big stuff. It really got exciting. And then um, I was forty six when my doctor said to me. Um, I need you to be tested for dyslexia. This is still in South Africa, um, and and there everything's private. You don't know, like so. I live in the UK now, and here we have the NHS, and you can go to the NHS and get all that sort of stuff um, paid for. There, it's all private. And um, my doctor said you need to go and be tested for uh, dyslexia. <laughs> Why would I be tested for dyslexia? I'm not stupid. Sure. <laughs> I related still then dyslexia to be um, a an intellectual problem. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I agreed with him eventually. I went off, got tested, and got my diagnosis. Mm -hmm. I'm dyslexic. And, oh. But in that time of thinking, oh, no, now I'm, I'm considered one of those people, 
I suddenly was empowered. I was yeah. suddenly um, realized and understood. Hey, now I know why I'm different. Now I know why spelling, reading, and writing are so bad, so difficult, so challenging. Anyway, then I moved to the United Kingdom, um, 2011, um, and um, I got diagnosed with ADHD when I was 53. So okay. got diagnosed with both of these things very late in life, um, but both those diagnoses were incredibly uh, empowering and enlightening and kind of opened a lot of doors mm -hmm. for me um, to help me understand why in business I think so differently and, and I come up with different solutions. Now I know yeah. it's my dyslexic and my ADHD brain. So uh, to encourage people that are like that, Hey, it's so exciting. It's, that's it's a fantastic. wonderful world. It's, Absolutely. Ah, yes. I agree with you. And that's, that's, that sounds incredibly valuable, especially yeah. uh, when we are talking about at what point. Uh, uh, so it's not really late at 40, 50, etc. Yeah. Uh, it, so it, it, awesome. the, the problem is, the, the problem, Erica, is so many people get to my age and they think, um, well, I'm, I don't want to be diagnosed because then I'm, I'm going to be labeled as old or stupid yeah, or, you know, yeah. so, and it's not, and we need to break that mentality, exactly. you know? Exactly, exactly. Anyway, I, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. <laughs> so another quick matter I'd like to discuss, can you dwell just a bit deeper, maybe not that deep, into how you develop some of the personalized strategies, maybe some specific approaches or techniques or tools uh, you find most effective in helping entrepreneurs with learning disabilities thrive in their ventures? Sure. Um, so as I said earlier, I, um, I've started a lot of businesses throughout mm -hmm. my life. Um, and, and I had to do that because I was never that good at working for anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so as I, as I grew through, through those various businesses, I had to develop strategies that worked for me. Right. Um, ways in which um, I knew uh, sort of what time of the day I'm best. I had to learn that during the day I have certain times where I'm uh, very excitable and very uh, energetic and there's yeah. times during the day when I'm really tired and, and just lethargic and don't want to do anything. Um, and I learned that if I work in those periods where I'm really energetic, I'm on the go, and then things happen. But if I try to work in that that kind of period where I'm tired and I'm lethargic and don't want to do anything, then pretty much I don't get much done. And so I learned to work with my, uh, my body. It was only later on that I discovered um, uh, the 24-hour cycle, the, the um, a circadian rhythm, uh, the everything that works in, in a 24-hour cycle. Um, I discovered that and I thought, okay, that, that's kind of cool because we now understand where our um, levels of cortisol are, are, are released to start waking your body up in the morning, mm -hmm. started to understand the hot and cold temperatures of your body during the day, all that sort of stuff. And it, it started to make sense. And then I discovered this, call, this thing called an ultradian rhythm. So the ultradian rhythm is the thing that runs through your life all day long and it, mm -hmm. it fluctuates um, between high periods and low periods. And the high and the low and back to the high is kind of a, a 90 to 120 minute period. And you go through this the whole day. And so I discovered that if I, those high periods, those periods where I'm excited and I'm on the go and I'm really amped, that's at the top of my, of my ultradian mm -hmm. rhythm. That's at the top of that 90 to 120 minutes. And so I've developed and designed um, methodologies to help people uh, in business work with that cycle. That's, um, that one is and interesting. I uh, haven't heard about it, this one. It, absolutely. And it, it's kind of like, okay, if we understand how our bodies Scientific, work. Yeah. Absolutely. It take, I mean, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a biologist. I'm, yeah. I mean, I live, like I said, I left school but two still, years yeah. early. <laughs> But I love and, and I'm fascinated by how mm -hmm. the brain works and how the nervous system works and those up periods and the down periods and what are all the, um, the neurotransmitters and all mm -hmm. those things that are, what is that all about? And how can we, instead of focusing on things like dopamine and serotonin and blah, 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 which everybody talks about, I, I think we need to go a little bit further. And so um, understanding your ultradian rhythm, where these chemicals are released, why they're released at certain times, how they're released. Hey, if we work with that, whoa, life's so good. Um, and it's empowering for us as, as neurodiverse people. 
And so that's, that's what I've learned and that's what I try to impart into the business environment. That's fascinating, especially uh, to hear about your this one approach. So, yeah. and uh, let's uh, touch a bit maybe outcomes. Can you share yeah. any success stories or notable achievements resulting from your empowerment efforts? Like, how do you measure the impact of your work? Maybe whether it was assisting innovative startups and uh, sure. helping to measure their success by these traditional metrics such as revenue, or not only that, but also a sense of fulfillment, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I think going back to um, the world before COVID, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a world away, uh, but in, in that environment. So as I said, I, I came to the UK in 2011 and um, started to build my business. Um, and I started to measure or to adapt my business to work with my brain, the way it worked okay. uh, to to understand things differently. And so as I was um, kind of putting that information out on platforms like LinkedIn, um, people started contacting me and go, hey, I, I, I want to know more about that. How can we implement that in my business? And I was a business consultant uh, at the time and coach. And um, I started to fly all over the world, um, worked with companies in Oman, um, really successfully restructured a cement company in Oman. I know nothing about cement, but I know about people. Um, I helped to restructure a company in Saudi Arabia, an, uh, um, a, uh, an air conditioning company. Mm -hmm. I worked with banks in Dubai and uh, insurance companies in Malaysia and in Indonesia. Um, worked with automotive companies in Korea and um, worked with uh, technology companies in 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 Thailand um, and, and loads of companies around the UK uh, as well. Wow. So but quite, quite a diverse uh, look. Oh, abso absolutely. <laughs> but that was taking, that was taking my divergent way of thinking, my mm -hmm. neurodivergent way of thinking and going, uh, here's, here's what traditionally happens. Okay. People have, they identify a problem and then they look for the box that covers that problem. And they say, okay, this is the box, so we need this to cover our problem. And they try to make this box fit their problem. Mm -hmm. Instead of understanding their problem as being completely unique to them, and there's no box that fits it. And what us as neurodivergent people bring to that conversation is we don't recognize the box. We think outside. We think, as a friend of mine in America says, we think on the periphery. We, we look on the outside mm -hmm. and we find those things and we bring them together. We provide a solution for that problem and people go, wow. Yeah, absolutely. Why didn't we think of that? <laughs> and so that's how I measure my success is somebody's got a problem. I create an, a, a solution. I bring it, I plug it in and off it goes. That's my, that's my satisfaction. That's exciting Brilliant. for me. And you earn a revenue through that. Happy days. Now, since I've slightly changed my business, and my business is now focused on teaching neurodivergent people how to do what I used to do. And, right. and so we focus on mindset, we focus on habits, and we focus on flow. Um, how do we change your way of thinking about yourself, about the world, about problems, about your neurodivergent how do we change the way you think about these things so that you can be better you can deliver better results you can scale all those things how do we change your mindset and then how do we take that changed mindset and we apply it to your everyday habits uh, how do we take that and we apply it to the goals you've created so that you you create a goal out there, but you bring it back towards you and you do the stuff today that makes that goal a reality. How do you change that for your neurodivergent brain? Yeah, exactly. And, then, and yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's the thing that so many people miss. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I absolutely agree. And everyone has each own quirks, as I said. ADHD, ADHD is one topic, uh, dyslexia is another approach. So absolutely. That's so and, I, let, me, let me give you an example, yeah, Erica, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. A little while ago, about, um, what was it? Uh, about six or eight months ago, I met a student here in Exeter, uh, at Exeter University. Um, 
and she is from mainland China. Okay. Okay. Uh, speaks very good English, so her and I could understand each other. I don't speak Mandarin. I mm -hmm. don't speak any other Chinese dialects, but she speaks very good English, and we could communicate okay. really, really well. And we really became good friends. Um, and and we talk a lot, and we still do. And she said, "Oh, I don't. This dyslexia, ADHD thing, doesn't work for us Chinese." And I said, "Well, okay, let's uh, let's break that down a little bit." Um, you are thinking in terms of uh, um, characters. I'm thinking in terms of letters. But for a person that's dyslexic, and everybody, in fact, we don't actually see characters. We don't see letters. We see images. And that is how the brain interprets what that character, what that letter is. Because we see the image. And it's the image in our, in our brain that goes, oh, yes, that image, that character, that means X, Y, Z. Or that letter, that image and that letter mean X, Y, Z. And so dyslexia is not about the, the, the language. It's not about the culture. It's not about the uh, nationality. Dyslexia and ADHD are about the way the brain has evolved or was designed, whichever you choose to believe. Okay, yeah. so this is the brain you've got. I'm from Africa. I'm an African, okay? <laughs> I'm not a European. My brain yeah, works totally so different to the way Europeans' brains work, okay? That, that's My language. The way I, absolutely, absolutely. So, but the brain is the same, irrespective of where you come from. It evolved designed the same and those areas that recognize the characters in chinese or the the letters in a phonetic language or uh, english for example it's exactly the same component and Maybe, it's the component yeah. within the brain that is designed differently mm -hmm. when we understand that we can say okay i'm dyslexic how can i leverage that how can i utilize that to make the world a better place Exactly. So take yes. notes, our neurodivergent bodies. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, amazing. And I also heard you mentioned your, like, uh, I know, award-winning five-peak strategy with a focus on LinkedIn. Uh, could you tell us maybe what the ultimate goal or just, uh, if possible, uh, maybe you could share some data on results or feedback. Why sure. people find it helpful? Okay, so uh, Five Peaks is a, uh, so I've been a LinkedIn trainer since 2012, I think. Um, and I've always tr tried to teach people to use LinkedIn, not in the way most LinkedIn try, uh, teachers try and teach it. So most people who teach you how to use LinkedIn mm -hmm. are teaching you what they know to get people that they can teach how to use LinkedIn. So it's they're looking for people who want to learn how to use LinkedIn so that they can learn how to use LinkedIn. I want, I want to um, teach people who are, I don't know, electricians, um, are engineers, are doctors, are lawyers. They're not interested in getting LinkedIn clients. They're interested in getting engineering clients or um, clients who need... I don't know, uh, their, their taps fixed mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Okay, okay, so Five Peaks is designed in a way that anybody can use it to get the type of business they want. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay. Um, I teach students how to use it to get their next job. Got it. So I'm working. Here with a bunch of students at Exeter University at the moment and Plymouth University as well down the road from me to use LinkedIn. Um, they are all uh, law students. How to mm -hmm. use LinkedIn to get their training contract. Okay? okay. And I'm using that same Five Peaks method. And the Five Peaks method is you've got to have your profile right. If you're not getting your profile right, you've missed the boat altogether because um, there's a, 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 a saying that says um, be excellent at the basics, and everything else can be built on that. 
the basics of LinkedIn is the foundation. That's your profile. Mm -hmm. So get the profile done. Then you can add the other four peaks on. The other four peaks are engagement, connection, mm -hmm. content, and and then the last one is is using um, uh, the sales platform within LinkedIn. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. But really, it's all about making sure that you've got the basics built and then one step on top of the next. Communication, connection, engagement, all those things um, are built on top of that foundation. So the, five peaks, so the five peaks methodology is designed around that, um, but it's specifically designed for people that are neurodivergent. So it's five peaks, ND, neurodivergent. Right, so five five peaks. Why is it different for people with neurodiver uh, neurodiverse conditions? I don't like writing. I don't write well. Uh, let me let me change that around. Mm -hmm. I like writing. I just can't do it well. Okay? okay. Yeah. So I've discovered a bunch of AI tools that I've learned how to use that help me to write better. Those tools, well, they they can be used by people who are not neurodivergent, but when somebody who's neurodiverse, particularly people with dyslexia, use those tools, oh, what an amazing thing begins to happen. Yeah, just adapt and to work with what you have. <laughs> Absolutely. It, I mean, like the, this headset that I'm wearing, okay? This is noise cancelling. My dog can stand here next to me and bark. I can't hear her, okay? My mm -hmm. wife comes into my office. She touches me on the shoulder. I just about get a heart attack because I can't hear her, okay? Oh, yeah. But... Just using these, and I'm working on LinkedIn, it excludes everything around me. Mm -hmm. So my brain can focus. I'm ADHD. So for somebody with ADHD, it's about that focus. Yes, okay? yes, exactly. So it's about understanding not just how LinkedIn works, but mm -hmm. what are the peripheral tools you can use that makes LinkedIn work better for you. So that's what the Five Peaks methodology is all about. Um, and it teaches you how to use LinkedIn for 20 minutes, 20 minutes a day. Move on. Okay. No doom scrolling. No, none of those. Ah, you got to be on there all the time. 20 minutes yeah. a day, finished, game over. Perfect. That's it. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From what I gathered today, I would like to... Uh, wrap up our chat with a quote yep. from one of my favorite sto stoics, uh, Marcus Aurelius. Oh. The to <laughs> action, advice, and action. So what stands in the way becomes the way. So thank you, Mr. Williams, for sharing your thank you, insight, Erica. insights and expertise with us today. It's clear that your work is making a significant difference in the lives of entrepreneurs with whether it be dyslexia, ADHD, etc. And I'm sure if only like it's uh, like me who come from little deserted uh, regions with no vast knowledge, as you said, on the subject, uh, yeah. could have, have access to such information like from experts as you share now, the world would have been, if not a better place, but the navigation through the levels of this game we call existence would have totally yeah. made sense more. And, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And to our audience, yeah, thank you for joining us. I will leave all the links, including to the Adashas company, uh, in the description. And have a nice day and stay near awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Speak, and Cheers. yeah, we got it in time. So yeah, I, have, um, I wish you a nice day and to solve all your <laughs> things with life. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the invite, Erica. It was lovely mm -hmm. talking to you. And um, yeah, I hope things go very well with, with, with what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I soon will be finishing my master's degree. So thank you very much. Okay. It's yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Yeah. With your tough schedule, I really appreciate your participation in this one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice Take day. Take care, Erica. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.